this week's episode of The Art of Decluttering, we are talking about decluttering and organising your cords and cables. Hi, I'm Hi. Kirsty Fruja. Oh, I'm Amy Ravel. We should probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> they know who we are. Do they? Well, they do now. But do Because we introduced ourselves. Yes, they do now. <laughs> So this episode was requested by Kerry Dorman. Thank you, lovely Kerry. We've had this topic comes up every time we declutter a house. Oh, my goodness. Every but single time. You can't avoid it. No. So there's there's things we're going to talk about. We want to talk about decluttering your cords and cables. Mm-hmm. We want to talk about organising your cords and cables. And we want to talk about managing your cords and cables. Like what once you've decluttered and organised, what do you do when the inevitable next cord and cable comes in? Mm-hmm. Or when you need to use a cord and cable. Yeah, like how? Without yeah. being that crazy person that has boxes of cords and cables and drawers and cords and cables and all So that. I feel a lot of the times that I actually feel that this episode is probably for potentially the man in your life. Really? Yes. No. I feel like when I go into clients' homes mm-hmm. and I'm working with the wife or the mm-hmm. part, wo- woman the partner, mm-hmm. If they're a heterosexual couple, yep. <laughs> that the wife often goes, no, nah, I can't, I can't touch that because that's my husband's, you know, domain. Yeah, okay. Or no, I can't get rid of anything because my husband needs every single cord and cable. I feel like yes, okay, yes, yes. yes, yes. Do you understand me yes, now? Yes, I was. Yep. I feel like a lot of men actually have an unhealthy relationship with cords and cables. <laughs> I think you might be right. Yeah. This might be the episode that you need to put on in the car yeah. or maybe just say to your partner, hey, if you listen to this, it would make my life <laughs> really, really good. Yeah. And if you are a woman and you have, you struggle with cords and cables and letting go of anything and and then please keep listening. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's perhaps a person in the relationship if you're, if you're partnered. Yeah. Are you this person? Yes. Yeah. That's why I that's think why I, you yes. asked up at it. I know. And then when I thought about it, I thought maybe, like I thought about my clients yes. and went, oh, you're right. There's so many of them who go, oh, you're, my husband manages that side of things. Yes. It's like the person in the family that the does person. the finances. Yes. It's like that person who probably is the court person too, let's be honest. Because <laughs> that's your how your family, brain works. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so now no, we've so, established so that. So now <laughs> it's not gendered. It is the court that person. Ter- type of person. Yeah. Which I don't ever want to be gendered. Um, it's not, I'm not trying to be stereotypical. Oh, no, but you're like, talking about how things are by your experience of working with clients, which is what we do every day. Yes. And the majority of my clients choose to wash their hands of cords and cables <laughs> because they like pretending that it's their partner's problem. Yeah. <laughs> Not the fact that they have four iPhones sitting in their bedside drawer that all come with cables and cords and headsets and all the rest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or camcorders from circa oh, 1990. Can I, is this, is this the right time for a confession? Go for it. Okay. So. All time is a good time for a confession. Yeah. In 2006, when I was pregnant with my first baby, we bought ourselves a Handycam. Oh. We saved up, I think it was like $800. That's a lot of money. It was back then. But it's still a lot of money. It's true. It is. So we bought it. We took videos of our babes, holidays. Babes or just one? Oh, no. Did it last through to Elijah? (laughs) Yes, yes. It definitely lasted. But then, of course, once smartphones came in, that superseded our camcorder, which – so I – taken all the videos off it and all that kind of thing. That's not true. I had downloaded everything off it. So I had all the videos, but I rediscovered it the other day. I think in some part of my brain, I had thought I'm going to sell it. <laughs> Let's be honest. That stuff's not worth anything. Mm-hmm. So I put it aside. And I was like, I'll donate it. And then I thought I better plug it in. This is, this is one of the hurdles that so many people have. Yes. I need to keep this cord because I need to plug in the hard drive to check if there's anything I need on the hard drive before I can get rid of it all. Yes. So it's all this procrastination and I need to, which is exactly what I had. And it sat there for a week and I went, this is ridiculous. And I just threw the whole lot in the bin. You didn't even check if there was a video on there that you hadn't. No. And that's, I I totally understand because that is the procrastination Mm -hmm. because you know that you've downloaded everything. The reason I couldn't donate it is because there were still videos on there. Yeah. So I'd have to charge it to get in there to figure out. I was like, this is too hard. I know. 
but a lot of our clients don't even, like won't even chuck it out because they are worried that they haven't downloaded everything yes. and then they'll miss the video that they'd forgotten that they'd even taken. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I think that's the problem. That's one of the issues is that you don't even remember what is on that video. Yeah. So why do you need to keep it? You you weren't ever going to go, oh, I need to get that. I know exactly where that video of their first birthday is. It's on the camcorder that I haven't looked at for 12 years. Uh-huh. You don't, Like if it was important to you, you would have done something about it yep. at the time. That's not to say that you should chuck it out necessarily. Like you should go to the effort to check it. Yeah. Like we we don't want we're not advocating destroying all your family history. All your family no. history, please. But don't, don't hear leave that. it. But also, don't just stop procrastinating. Yeah. <laughs> stop procrastinating. Just set aside time. Make it. Book it into your diary. Uh-huh. Go. You know that Saturday afternoon that it's pouring with rain. I'm going to see it and I'm going to get the cords. And you know what? Which we will come to soon. You can buy the cords. <laughs> Even yeah. for an old relic from 1980, you can probably find the cord somewhere or find some way of doing it or offload it to somebody who specializes in that. Like take your video to a store, to a company that download everything uh-huh. to the cloud. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not even going to say DVD because even that is outdated Correct. now. You need to put them in the cloud. You need to have them in, you know, and then you also need to download them and put them. <laughs> there's a whole. There's a whole. Yeah. yeah. Go talk to our friends. Yeah, we'll, we'll organise <laughs> an episode on that soon. <laughs> <laughs> Go listen to our friends podcast. <laughs> <laughs> DIY photo organising. Yes. That'll help you out. <laughs> but, yes, yeah, so. um but back to the right. cords and cables because that yes. – I feel like there's just so much um, photo, F-O-T-O, fear of throwing out mm-hmm. when it comes to cords. Why, Kirst? Why are we so afraid? I have no idea. <laughs> why you are this, you like... afraid? People, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? You can go out and get another one and not that – Again, we're not trying to advocate consumer society. We want you to be thoughtful and intentional about um, what you bring into your home. It's not about being, it's not about like just chucking everything and then rebuying it. But if you don't know what that cord is for and your husband or partner or person who's in charge of the cords and cables in your home, Amy, if you don't know what that cord is for, chances are you're never going to use it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the reality. It's like, the truth. Are you even going to use it? And also I think 10, 15 years ago you had an iPod, you had a phone, you had a laptop, you had a video camera, you had a digital camera, you had like all these different devices. Now you have a phone and maybe a laptop. So you don't have this plethora of devices anymore. You have the one you're using. Yes. And you're using those cords, I would assume, to keep it charged. (laughs) So get rid of all the other stuff. But even if you are, like, you know, a computer crazy person, like you love cords (laughs) and you've had lots of computers in your life, have a look at them. Particularly laptop cords usually say Mac. (laughs) Or yeah, they do HP or Canon or, whatever. or you yeah. know like and if they're for a printer they've got a different connector so you can see this is a printer so it's just about being actually taking the time mm. and I think this comes back to procrastination again that it's it often gets left in the too hard basket yeah. it's often just shoved in a box shoved in a drawer I'll do, deal with that another time mm. and. That's fine if it's not frustrating you, but if you go to use your camera, like your digital SLR camera, and you cannot find the cord for it, then it's not it's not serving any purpose, is uh-huh. it? Because you can't use a digital SLR. So I would, and I know that you feel similarly, Amy, so I would suggest getting all the cables 
and all of your digital item or like all of the things that they belong to, mm-hmm. laying them all out, marrying the yes. cords with their devices and then you know what you need and then you can make decisions around decluttering because yeah. you may find that camcorder from nine from 2006 and realise that we don't ever use it and we're not going to use it because we have a smartphone now that we mm-hmm. record our live video on. So it can be put in electronic waste. Yep. Actually, talking of electronic waste... Victoria, Australia have made a really exciting change where you can no longer throw electronic waste, so cords, cables, devices, in your rubbish bin. You have to put them into an e-waste recycling. I'm so excited by that. Which is at your local office works. Yeah, or your local um, tip or you know, there's yeah, so there's many so places. so many places. It's not, it's not hard. No, it's, it's a really great. It's not a reason to keep them in your drawer. No, and it makes me a bit guilty that I got rid of my camcorder like a week before that was the legislation. But anyway, grace, grace, grace. Yes. <laughs> so get everything and marry them up with their cords and then make decisions around decluttering the actual devices to yep. begin with. And then all the excess cords you can let go of because mm-hmm. we do, again, I know we just set up, but you can go out and get a cord. Yeah, well, you don't even have to leave the house. Like I order all my cords on Kogan.com. They're about $8. They get delivered in about four days. But you also Easy. can probably find the cord, repurpose another cord. Do you know, like um, I'm trying to think of something, um, one of something that I've got, my Kindle yeah. has the same cord charges other usb devices like oh, awesome. char- like the it's usb yep. and then the kindle the bit that goes into the kindle yeah we're playing charades we haven't yeah. done charades for a little while yeah yep the <laughs> male part yep of the cord yep is goes into my a few other of my you know like my phone charger you know like the portable yes, phone yes, yes. charger yep. it goes into that as well so you don't need so i don't need three yeah it also goes into my boom my ue oh box. yeah i can picture the one like so yeah it i unless you're going to resell it and you want to resell it with everything then think about do i need to keep all of them or can they be purposed yep. Repurposed, and that's why it's like, oh, you don't. Maybe you don't need to hop on Kogan and buy a new cord. Yeah, there might be another one. You've got one already in your home. Are you loving getting into decluttering and organising? Are you excited to get into different spaces in your house and just see the transformation that is possible? But are you also finding that there are some things that just aren't sticking? That you're finding that you just don't have the routine or system to really hold you where you want to be. Well, Kirstie and I have developed the Art of Decluttering online course, which is an amazing six-module self-paced course with an interactive Facebook community. So if you want to go from overwhelmed to just nailing this decluttering thing, we would love you to join us. You just visit outofdecluttering.com.au forward slash course. We have payment plans available. Access it today and see that transformation that you've been dreaming of. Have an organized home that stays organized for life. We cannot wait to see you in the course. So how the Ravels do it is exactly what Kirst is. In fact, there's a whole chapter in my book about how to deal with electronics. And it's then to snap lock bag things as sets. So if you get a new phone, all the cords and cables that come with that phone, I put it in a snap lock bag, label it. This is my iPhone S million, whatever these things are. I uh, love it. You don't use iPhones. No, what are you talking I don't. about? No. Just talk about you. I have Samsung. a Samsung A8. Yeah. <laughs> so you put everything for that in that snap lock bag. And so if you are someone who wants to sell it on, you just pick up the snap lock bag. You've got everything you need. Or if you're looking for something, it's in the snap lock bag. It just makes it really simple. And then when you're finished with it, that whole bag can go to your e-waste collection because you're done with the device yes. fully. Yes, you've taken the phone to Mobile Monsters, correct? And you've taken all of all of the all of the cords with yep. it. Do you label your cords ever? Like, do you do like a little sticky label or a bread tag label or a label like a cord label? Anything on any of yours? No, because we don't have that many, and they're usually in use. Yeah, you know, okay. Like yep. the phones 
are always on charge. The iPads are always on charge. Yeah. Um, and again, I just look at what they need. Like, you know, I look at the device and look at what the male part that I need. Yeah. And I just find the cord. Yeah. But I think it's a great idea. We just don't need to do it in our house. Yeah, because you're already minimalist. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was a hesitation of a yes. Um, uh, we are, we're definitely minimalist. We pr- could probably do better on our cords and cables maybe, okay. but I don't feel like they're too much of frustration mm. in our house. Yep. But I do go into lots of clients' homes and I see boxes and boxes of cables. Yeah. It's just – it's, and what it is is the fear becomes just paralysing and you end up keeping things for decades. Yeah. Because the, the fear – of what if I need it is just so debilitating and you feel like if you're anything like our generation, you didn't grow up with devices and so you don't feel like you're all over it. You feel like, oh, if I get rid of that, I might just break something. I might ruin it. Yes. But you can get rid of cords that you don't know. If you don't know what they're for, You don't know what they're for. You're get not rid gonna, of them. Yeah, and it can be frustrating to gather all your devices, you know, like to gather the laptops and the printers and the and the camcorders and everything, but it'll you'll thank us. If you don't do your it now, future, you're going to have to do it at some time. Your future self will thank you. Your future self will thank you. Yes, good. I promise you. How many phone charges do you have, Kirst? Great question. <laughs> I only usually use two, three. I've got one in my car. Yep. I've got one attached to my computer. Yep. And we've got one... We've got a few in our walk-in pantry that are for all the common devices like the iPads and the phones that anybody can use. Okay, so three main places main where I charge my yep. phone. Yep. I don't have one in my bedroom, mm-hmm. but I do have my watch charger in my bedroom. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, I'm similar. We've got bedroom, car, office, and I've got one in a um, charging pack that I keep in my car or when I travel. Just in case. The just in case I've run out of power <laughs> <laughs> and that's got a battery pack in it and just leads to make sure that I've got headphones and, but that's it. And they're always in the spots that I need them. Yeah. And I feel like cords, uh, phone cords are different from cord cords, other cords, <laughs> because our phone cords are in current use. Permit, yeah, that's permanently. true. Permanently. Although, like, I I do know families who's who are, have got multiple multiple court like phone c- Apple c- chargers because their kids take them and never bring them back. <laughs> so, yeah. but that's that's a habit problem. Like the solution yes. to that is habit or redefining what the expectation is. Yes, yes, mm. and th- I think. Apple devices too because they've been lightning chargers for the last several reiteration mm. iterations iterations of the phone. So you may have bought an iPhone six and it still works on the iPhone ten. Yeah, right. So you've kept the six cord even though you've let go of the six phone because we don't tend to like some people just get rid of the phone and don't get rid of the cords because they still work on my new one. Mm. And that's why you might have multiples. Multiples of it. Do you know what people still have in their homes is like um, phone cables? Like I'm talking like telephone yeah. plug into the wall cables yes. so often. Yes. And Ethernet cables. Yes. All the time. Well, yes. Yeah. Get rid of them. Yes. If you're not using them, get rid of them. Yes. Is there a theme in this episode? Yes. Chuck it out, chuck it out, chuck it out, out, out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that it is that letting go of the expectation mm. of I'm going to need this one day. Yep. You're probably not going to need it one day. Uh-huh. And, and again, here our heart for you is not so that you go out and spend $20 every 20 minutes. Like, because that's another one of our rules or, you know, the minimalist rule is if you can replace it in 20 minutes for less than $20, then you can chuck it out. But it is, and it's not so that you can continually spend $20. No. And it's not so that we're buying into consumer um, culture. It's 
if you actually if you don't know what it is for then let it go and then if you realize what it was for you can replace it and it's not going to cost you that much I think this has been helpful I say that about every episode I get to the end of it and I'm like I think we've done pretty good Kirst I hope that most of, I hope that all of our episodes are helpful <laughs> even if it's just for one person that's right <laughs> this this was worth our time yes so Amy, you do snap lock bags for all new devices and electronics that come into your home. What Correct. are some other ways of organising that people could use? That's a great question. You could use boxes. You could use like old, like the boxes that the things come in and just write on it with a Sharpie. Uh, that's about as far as my imagination's going right now. What are your ideas? <laughs> well, and you can label the cords so that you can have them out. Yes. So you can put sticky tape around them mm-hmm. or labels or... Yep, masking tape. Masking tape or, you know, Instagram designed... <laughs> you know labels for things like so that you can always know what that cord Mm. is for Mm -hmm. and then it makes that makes it really easy chucking it out or passing it on or selling it because you actually know what it belongs to instead of guessing that it may have belonged to a printer from four printers ago or you could do a charging station Yes. I've recently tried to set up a charging station at our house tried well I set it up successfully (laughs) my kids don't like it why is that I don't really know I've tried to nut down like what's the actual issue you have with it we're not quite there yet is it like is it maybe because they like accessing their phone while it's charging no because it's right where they were otherwise charging I've just made it really neat and put in a little box and I've sawn out a corner so the chargers can go in like it's pretty cool I'll take a photo of it and then I would I would welcome feedback from your children or no, from No, no, from other people whose opinions I act no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the feedback from my offspring. They don't like it. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. So, so I'll try take and a photo and we'll see. Why. Mm. So that is we've spoken about decluttering. We've spoken about organising. We've spoken about what to do when new things come in. Mm-hmm. And maintaining. Yeah. Which is like new things. Hmm. But is there anything more that you want to say about maintaining? I don't think so. You? I do. I've, I've, I've said it, but I just want to reiterate. <laughs> say it again, Kirst. Yeah. Um, say it again. <laughs> is when you get rid of a device or something that has a cord, get rid of the cord as well so that you're not keeping uh, – you know, except for the exception of phones where you might need multiple, you know. Yeah. It only comes with one cord, but you do need it at your computer and, you know, other than iPhones <laughs> or other than phones, if you're buying a new printer, get rid of the old printer cord. Mm-hmm. If you're buying a new laptop, get rid of the old laptop cords. Like, and whether, and as we said, we, there's lot, lots of e-waste recycling places yep. now so search out for them particularly if you live in victoria and it's now illegal to put it in your rubbish bin go government yay i'm going to read out a review um from one of our u.s listeners from one candace candace that wasn't that hard i don't know why i found that name particularly <laughs> difficult um practical and fun this podcast is thoroughly entertaining and extremely practical the hosts are so compassionate and likable and their advice is helpful and motivational i think um when when candace says we're thoroughly entertaining and extremely practical the extremely practical is on purpose the thoroughly entertaining is purely by accident <laughs> You mean us, yes. not what she's written. I no, was like, no, what do you us. mean? <laughs> Everything she's written is on purpose. And no, no, us. us. Yeah, we don't mean to be entertaining necessarily. Just... I love it. <laughs> so thank you for listening in this week. Please let us know if you've got any solutions that we haven't talked about. Come into our Facebook community and we'll see you next week. Yay. Oh, before we go. <gasps> yeah. P.S. P.S. Go listen to episode 19. It's on digital clutter. So... And we've got we've also got episodes on CDs and DVDs as well, which can kind of come in. I, I can see how they're related. Yep, I can too. Yep, I can too. <laughs> awesome. We can't wait to hang out with you again next week. Bring our laughter and practicality to you. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. 
Thanks for joining us. If you've learnt something awesome today, we'd love you to leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook so others can find our podcast too. Don't forget you can see the show notes in your podcast app or over at our website, artofdecluttering.com.au. So if there's anything you want more info on, check it out there. If you'd like to join our supporter community, you can do so over at patreon.com slash decluttering. We hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy the freedom. 